Assalamualaikum and hello, my name is Muhammad Nohair Yabir Mansur and I'm from CEEC 2223C2 and today I'm going to give a speech about the need of comprehensive sex education in school. How many of you remember receiving comprehensive sex education during school years? How old were you when you were first exposed to sex education? Or do you even know what sex education is? First and foremost, what exactly is sex education? Sex education consists of excellent instruction and learning on a wide range of subjects connected to sex and sexuality. It examines values and beliefs around those subjects and aids in the development of skills necessary for navigating relationships with oneself, others, and the community, as well as managing own sexual health. Between April and May 2022, an online survey was carried out to study Malaysian youth's knowledge of sexual health. The study surveyed more than 1,000 Malaysians between 18 and 30 years old. The findings of the survey highlighted that there were gaps and misconceptions in the understanding of STIs and women's reproductive health. This shows that our generation is lacking in terms of sexual knowledge. Sex education is often labelled as taboo. People say that subject and knowledge like this are not suitable for kids and teenagers. But did you know approximately 1 in 4 teenagers girls in the United States contracts a sexually transmitted infection by the age of 19? As taboo as it might seem for others, it is undeniable that sex education is a topic that needs to be taught at school. Dr. Ralph Westheimer, a famous German-American sex therapist, once said, The best contraceptive is knowledge. Today, I am here to emphasize the importance of providing comprehensive sex education to young people. Effectively, sex education covers a broad range of topics that extend far beyond the simple mechanics of reproductive biology. It's about providing young people with necessary knowledge and skills to navigate their sexual behavior and relationships in a healthy, responsible, and confident manner. One critical aspect where sex education can provide substantial impact is in the issue of teenage pregnancy, which has remained a worrying trend worldwide. With the imparting with proper sexual knowledge, pregnancies can be significantly reduced. Figures from the Malaysian Welfare Department, which reveal that 111 pregnancies among unmarried young girls and a childbirth rate of 6 per 1,000 women aged 15 to 19 underscore the urge of raising teenage pregnancies. Also, a study from the US supports the significant role of sex education in reducing teen pregnancies, acknowledging a drop in teenage pregnancy rates by 7% within the 5 years of implementing such educational programs. Statistics from 2019 highlights that the staggering 55 percent of unintended pregnancies in adolescent girls aged 15 to 19 ended in abortions. This underscores the lifelong impacts that can be avoided with early and comprehensive sexual education. Besides curbing teenage pregnancies, sex education prepares young individuals about safer sexual practices. This entails providing knowledge about different contraception methods and fostering responsible sexual behavior. A prevalent lack of awareness about diverse contraceptive methods stemming from inadequate sexual education can lead to unwanted mishaps like unintended pregnancies and also STIs. Lastly, an overlooked aspect where sex education can be transformative is in addressing sexual violence and also harassment. Implementing lessons about consent, personal boundaries, and respect in sex education can inherently contribute to a culture of consent thereby reducing sexual assaults or harassment incidents. The significance of mutual consent in any sexual activities including touching, someone should be emphasized as its absence can account to sexual assault and also harassment. Comprehensive sex education can seek to underline this importance. A survey has communicated insightful information about the prevalence of sexual harassment in Malaysia. The survey involved a sizable sample size of 1,002 Malaysian citizens, supplying it with a statistically relevant range. The findings were quite troubling, revealing a significant disparity between genders in terms of harassment experiences. 
The survey indicated that more than a third of equating 36% of Malaysian women reported experiencing some form of sexual harassment. In contrast, about 17% of Malaysian men reported similar experiences showing that women are more than twice likely experiencing this abuse compared to men in Malaysia. Also noteworthy is the observation that out of the total number of people who were victims of harassment, only slightly over half, to be precise, 53% took the step of reporting the incident, sharing the experience with someone else. This aspect hints toward a possible societal or systematic issue as almost half of the victims found it difficult to report the experience. The reasons for this could be multifaceted ranging fear of further victimization or backlash, lack of trust in the system to bring about justice or cultural stigmas associated with harassment victims. This survey, therefore, not only highlights the prevalence of sexual harassment in Malaysia, but also shines light on the potential inadequacy in the response system that should aid victims seeking justice. It urges towards the necessity to investigate these responsible handling processes and societal attitudes to ensure victims feel encouraged and safe to report such incidents. Indeed, comprehensive sex education is of paramount importance in shaping the holistic health and well-being of our youth. It enables them to make informed decisions about their sexual health and relationship while preparing them well in advance for adulthood. Comprehensive sex education extends far beyond the biology components of sex, encompassing broader aspects including emotional well-being, consent, mutual respect, and safe sex practices. First, by providing comprehensive sexual education, we ensure that our young people are well informed with accurate and nuanced information, moving it away from the often incomplete and misleading information that can be gathered through peers or also media. Informed individuals can be better understand the potential ramifications of their choices, promoting safer practices and decreased risk of unplanned pregnancies and sexually transmitted diseases. Second, a crucial component of robust sex education is teaching about consent and respect in a relationship. This not only helps young people understand their rights, but also promotes empathy and respect for their partner's rights. As a result, they are better equipped to navigate healthy relationships and tackle harassment issues or also abuse. Sex education should also include topics of emotional well-being and intimacy in relationships. This holistic approach allows youth to grasp the importance of mental and emotional health. In addition to physical health, it contributes to their ability to recognize and handle emotional challenges linked with relationships and maintain a positive self-image. Lastly, by openly discussing these issues in an educational setting, it helps to destigmatize sexual health this could potentially make young people more comfortable discussing sexual concerns with healthcare providers, thus improving the overall sexual quality. To this end, it's clear that comprehensive sex education is not simply about the act of sex itself, but a broader spectrum of relationships, knowledge, practices, respect, and overall well-being. Hence, it isn't just beneficial and but essential for a healthier generation and also community. So that's all from me. Thank you.